All right, let's do it. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. It's great to see you all here today. Uh, we are gathered together, uh, wherever we are, uh, to worship, to worship God, our Father, who has given us a living hope through Jesus Christ, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit working within us. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Brady Friesen, and on behalf of the worship team, uh, the pastoral staff, and, and everyone else who is involved with the service here today, uh, we welcome you. Uh, it's great to see you all here I think the last time that I was up here it was end of June, and I think there were a, total, a grand total of six people in the church, uh, so the pews were very empty, so uh, it's great to see, uh, great to see everyone and, and actually have, have people here and, and have those connections, and um, uh, yeah, it's really good. So wherever you are, um, welcome to the service. Uh, we do want to uh, make you aware of some of the things that are going on in the life of our church. Um, the ministries and activities of the church will be starting up for the fall season in just a couple more weeks. Uh, so uh, you can see our weekly newsletter and uh, as well as the website. 
for all the dates and the times and, uh, and to see how you might uh, be able to participate. Uh, so the first thing uh, that we want to make you aware of is the uh, safe place policy training uh, for all volunteers. So this will be happening uh, on Tuesday, so this coming to August 31st, uh, and it will be available uh, in person here as well as on Zoom. Uh, the registration and the Zoom links uh, were sent out this past week. You can also find the links on our website and Church Center app. So that is uh, a training that if, if you're volunteering in any capacity, um, you, you should have the email, but it is, it is a, a mandatory uh, training. Okay, on Sunday, September 19th, so that's a few weeks away, but just to make, uh, make you all aware, there's a picnic in the park. So we'll be gathering together at Crescent Drive Park after the service for a time of food and, and fellowship. And, uh, and some reconnecting. So you can check the website and newsletter for more inf information as it becomes available. Uh, the Posture Shift Conference, it's uh, an event hosted by the Manitoba MB Conference and it will be happening on um, Wednesday, September uh, the 28th and uh, uh, to, the to the 29th as well. Uh, so if, if you wanna find out more information, please contact the church office. Um, or look on the website as well. Uh, finally, for those of you who are physically present, either uh, here in the sanctuary or in the gym, uh, we have uh, coffee available after the service uh, outside. Uh, I'm told that there will not be donuts, unfortunately, but I guess last week there was an issue with wasps, so we're going to avoid that. Uh, so uh, that's it for, uh, for the community life. Um, and our call to worship. Why don't, why don't we stand, actually, while we, uh, while we go into the call to worship? So the call to worship comes from Psalm 89, verses 5 through 8. All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. All right, let's sing together. I have heard a sound coming on the hearts and minds, healing brokenness. I feel a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation full of faith declared, and a song it will be. Out of the dark
He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion. The Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion. Stop. 
Good morning. Hi, I'm Ruth Schallenberg. I'm the pastor of Children's Ministries here at Fort Gary MB Church. And this morning we are going to celebrate and dedicate the newest member of our Fort Gary family. I would invite Eugene and Antoinette to come up with, uh, with uh, Alexander. Alexander was born uh, just a week and a half or so ago, and they have family in that we're celebrating uh, that and some birthdays, and so they've asked to, uh, to dedicate him here this morning. Child dedication in this church community is a time where parents commit to raising their child to know Jesus. And it's where we, the church, say that we will support them, we will love them, and we will be the face of Jesus to their child. Here they come. In Scripture, we find that blessing is described as an intentional act of speaking God's favor and goodness into someone's life. It's a way of adding value to the people around us. Words of blessing and hope need to be spoken by all of us to each other, and especially to our children. They need to hear from us who they are meant to be, how God sees them, what character traits we see in their lives. Blessing them with words from Scripture speaks truth into their lives. And of course, parents take on the primary responsibility of passing along faith to their children. And so we would like to hear from you now about your newest little one. Yeah, I believe in God. Right, here we go. I believe in Jesus, and uh, I want also my children to be like me. For me, it's like a miracle. I celebrate my 60 years this is first August, and I celebrate the newborn. Alexander is Prince. He's born on, two, on 11 children arrive. Now is 12. I'm here with my firstborn and my lastborn. Hmm. This, they make me to feel happy and thank God to grow up my family. You remember what I tell you a long time ago? I lose a lot of family. 75 people is gone. But God keep me to produce another people going to impress my family. This month, I celebrate my age with all my children in Canada here and my grandchildren. It was a big ceremony. Everyone wait to see a newborn also from the first until now they're still waiting. And then is he with me, is coming to bless the youngest of them. I thank God a lot. And the Bible said that I lose can read for I was privileged to be the support person for Antoinette at the hospital. Uh, not a midwife, just a support person. So I will read from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. These are the verses they have chosen. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Yes. Thank this you. word. Oh. You want to say something else? Yeah. Okay. This word, they show me what the people tell me when I was in Uganda is in 2003. The one pastor was speaking Swahili, and I was choosing to go to his church because I understand his language. And he told me everything I saw today. And he said, one of your children will be save the world. I think is Alexander. He's a prince. Mm. And we have a princess there. 
and the princess and the princess from the king, our uncle, our father. Today is a big thanks for mother. Ruth, I told you last time I was scared to see how the women are going to maternity. I can't go there. Even I still can't. But <laughs> I have a Ruth. Ruth, she's my mother in Iro. <laughs> then every my children call grandma. I thank you so much. I'm going to add a blessing to uh, Alexander. Alexander, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You know, it takes the whole church community to pass along faith to our children, to teach them how God's story is our story, to show them what living faith looks like. All the children that are part of Fort Gary Church are all our responsibility. We are their faith family. So in that, let's stand together with this family and say these words of prayer to them. Let's speak these words together. In the presence of God, the author and giver of life, we, the body of Christ in this place, Pray for you parents in the great and joyful responsibility God has entrusted to you. As individuals, we pray that as you grow in Christ, you may bear the fruit of wisdom and godliness day by day. As a church, we promise to fulfill our responsibility to you and your children in teaching, serving, and loving them that from their earliest days of memory, they may see the face of Jesus mirrored in us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who became a child, that we might become the children of God. Amen. Thank you. This is for you too. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Um, Lord, we praise you uh, for who you are. Both the lion who fights our battles and the lamb who submitted to death on the cross in the act of ultimate sacrifice that we might have life. Lord, may the truth of this mystery sink deeper in our hearts and in our minds that we would understand more and more the length and the height and the depth of your love. Lord, may we as a church body walk as you have called us to walk in humility and gentleness and patience and all the other uh, the fruits of the Spirit as we bear with one another in love. Lord, as we hear about... Um, now, just so many heartbreaking events, situations, uh, both close to home and far away around the world. Lord, give us compassion that our hearts would align with yours. Give us words to pray effectively. And Lord, open doors for us to act as we are able to act, that we may bring hope and peace to those suffering around us as you empower us. Lord, as we listen to the message this morning and as we continue to worship, uh, speak to us and draw us closer to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, why don't you stand once more? Be thou my vision, O Lord of my 
Good morning to all of you that are here uh, in the sanctuary and to those of you who are watching uh, the live stream either right now or later on. This, uh, I have been here in the pulpit a few times over the summer, but honestly, I haven't spoken a message, a sermon to you uh, since late June, and I'm excited about today. Now, some of you have noticed that I haven't spoken since the end of June, and you've been wondering about that. Well, as you know, uh, over the last uh, couple of months, we have been without a uh, worship pastor here at Fort Gary, and one of the things that I've been doing is behind the scenes making sure that our worship services are continuing as planned through the summer, and juggling all of those details, it gets, you know, it's not ideal, but that's the way it is. I do want to invite your prayers as a congregation. As we continue in this process, it has not gone as smoothly or as quickly as we had hoped, and we have not finalized who will be leading us in terms of the worship director position here at Fort Gary. We've had many conversations, and we're doing, we continue to work, and we have another meeting coming up in just a day or two uh, to talk about a, a plan to move forward, and we have people in mind but it's just gonna take some time. So we invite your prayers uh, for that process as we have a team that has been discerning uh, with various candidates, as well as our council, our pastoral team. And we're in this season right now of uh, putting together all of the plans for September and October. And uh, so pray, pray for our staff and pastoral team as well as there's a lot to be done between now and a couple of weeks from now. One of the things that I wanted to do for us as a congregation is as we head into this fall season and restarting many of the ministries that have uh, taken a break either for the summer or have been forced to take a break because of uh, COVID regulations over the last year or so, I wanted to take a couple of weeks for us to revisit who we are and why we do the things that we do. How it is that we are committed to walking together as a congregation and what it is that we believe God is asking us to do. What is our work? What is our purpose? Who are we at Fort Gary Mennonite Brethren Church? 
Oh, before I get into that too much, I do want to let you know as well that on Tuesday afternoon, I will be participating in a uh, meeting with a couple of other leaders from the uh, Mennonite Brethren Conference of Manitoba as we will be talking about how we as churches can come together to coordinate and to uh, help out with whatever the government will be asking of our society as we try to welcome in and help uh, support Afghan refugees that are fleeing the conflict uh, that is going on there right now. So we are in those conversations and we hope to be able to contribute meaningfully to alleviating some of that suffering as well as welcoming uh, people here into uh, this community. So stay tuned for more information about that after uh, we've had some of those conversations. Who are we here at Fort Garry? The reason I mentioned uh, this meeting that I'm having about welcoming refugees from Afghanistan is that that has been a consistent part of who we are. We have been a community that welcomes in people from around the world who are resettling and looking for new homes. And we have also provided a faith home for those who are new to the community, for those who are looking for fellowship, for connection, for a place to worship and to grow in their faith in Jesus Christ. We as a church here at Fort Gary have a vision statement. I don't know if you knew that or if you remembered that, it's not something that we have referred to regularly from the pulpit, but we certainly talk about it in our leadership context and in our church council and other places as we discern how we will minister, what kind of ministries and activities we ought to be doing. You can find that uh, vision statement on our website. It's there, and if you haven't looked at it lately, I invite you to go there and check it out. We have three different pieces to that vision. The first is inviting, the second is being, and the third is sending. These three words have formed the basis for how we operate as a congregation, how we live out our faith. For almost 20 years, these have been the words that we have carried with us as a congregation. And in that statement on the website, which is it's about a page and a half, two pages long. It distills down into these three things. That we at Fort Gary are a community of people committed to following Jesus in all aspects of our life. Certainly. And as a community, we're going to live out that community a commitment to Jesus through these three actions, inviting, being, and sending. Now, what are these three? Well, through our words and actions, we share who Jesus is with others, inviting them into relationship with Jesus, inviting them to join us here at Fort Gary on our journey of faith, and we welcome those who are new to this community. We celebrate them, and we are including them in the fellowship that we have, and we call this inviting, and we invite anyone all persons from whatever background, whatever tradition, whatever circumstances, we welcome and invite any and all to our fellowship here at Fort Gary. We also intentionally and thoughtfully emphasize disciple-making and growth in our spiritual lives by nurturing caring relationships with one another and growing together towards maturity in our life in Christ. This is being the faithful church, the one anothering, the immersing ourselves in the words of Scripture and in the presence of the Holy Spirit and listening for God's guidance as we walk with each other, as we serve one another, and as we grow in our understanding. And this third word, sending, we recognize that we are a community that has a mission and a purpose, a calling in Jesus Christ. And that calling is not only here at Fort Gary in this place, but it is also a global calling. And so we send people both into our local community, 
you are sent, I am sent to be a light and a witness to my neighbor, to my coworker, to my fellow student, to those that I encounter in my everyday walk. We bring the good news there, but also we send people into our broader community, into the northern communities here in Manitoba and in around the world with Multiply, which is our missionary arm of the MB Church. We are a community in which Christ and his presence and his love permeates every aspect of our being, our thinking, our planning, and our decision-making together through prayer, And through our service to one another and to the world, we are making an impact for the kingdom of God. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That's a great vision, isn't it? And we've been living into that vision for the last, like I said, two decades or so. Now, a couple of years ago, actually about three and a half years ago, we began a process of going back to that vision statement and saying, How are we doing with this? Is this who we still are? And what are we doing in the ways that we have ministered here at Fort Gary that maybe needs to change? We began that process in 2019. And out of that, uh, we we recognized and came to understand that there are some changes that have been going on in the context of our ministry, both within our congregation and in our wider community. The context of ministry has changed. And not all of our ways of doing ministry have changed along with that. And so we wanted to see what we needed to do. One of the things that we found is that our world has changed and our community has changed in some significant ways. One of those is that the church and faith, the life of the religious community, is no longer the center of our society. It no, op- it no longer occupies this place of privilege, of being at the center, being the, the voice that makes a difference in the community. People tend to think less about how faith impacts the way that they live, and rather, life itself imposes on them what they will do and where they will go and what is important. The questions that are raised in our community are why should we believe at all? Why does it matter whether you are a person of faith or not? And we who are part of the church of Jesus Christ wrestle with this as we see re- uh, a response to faith slipping away in many places in our society. We also see that our society has changed in some very real and tangible ways. Sociological changes that are happening all around us. There is an increased diversity in our neighborhoods and in our workplaces as we welcome more and more people from around the world from different ethnicities, different religious backgrounds, different understandings of the way that the world ought to be or the way that we function as a society. That brings change into the way that people see the world. It brings change into what our neighborhoods and our community organizations look like and sound like. And for some, some of those changes, we readily embrace and we are excited about them. And others may feel uncomfortable and challenging. We have also seen, particularly in the last three or four years, an increasingly rapid shift in political changes in our society. There has been a movement towards polarization and an exclusion of a middle ground. We no longer work together from differing perspectives for the well-being of our society, but rather it's our way or it's wrong. And if you don't listen to the way that I speak, then I can't walk with you. We need to respond to that polarization 
not only in political discourse, but even in the fabric of our society, even in our families. We have also seen a rapid shift in technological ways in which we are connected to one another. The rise of social media and the ability for us to connect, as we have done at various points, uh, to even be able to welcome our missionaries who are in Thailand, for instance, to speak to us on a Sunday morning through the use of Zoom and technology. Some of this is great. And without technology, uh, we as a congregation would have really struggled uh, dur during this time as of pandemic. Uh, well, okay, let's be honest. We have struggled. We have, right? But we have been blessed that with technology, we are able to still uh, participate in a worship service from the isolation of our own homes and in a sense be connected in that way through YouTube and live streams and video with the body of Christ. All of these changes mean that the way that we approach life itself in our communities has changed and certainly has impacted the way that we serve as a faith community. I also want to recognize that in our direction setting process, we, rec we acknowledged and affirmed that there are things about who we are that have not and will not change. Our foundation. Our foundations as a faith community are these, that we believe that Jesus Christ is the one name, the one person that can change and save our world. And that truth is found through the authority of the scriptures that we hold to and read and immerse ourselves in. This is the voice of God in our lives. And we will remain rooted as a congregation in our Anabaptist and evangelical understandings of how to live out what we find in the scriptures. We have this change in our context and we have our foundations which will not move. And in between, we must find a way forward. Together as a congregation, we discerned and prayed and went through a whole process of walking through who we are and what God is calling us to. And we found three things that we are going to be working on. They mirror in some ways the inviting, being, and sending that we already have in our vision statement. These three things are teaching and faith formation, connections and belonging, and our mission, our purpose. These things have not changed, but we are highlighting that in these three areas, we are going to renew and revisit how we do these things together. Teaching and for faith formation is how we develop and sustain our living faith in God through Jesus Christ. Connections and belonging is how we move from being a church of individuals to being a fellowship of faith that nourishes and grows mature disciples. And our mission together is to continue being a light, a voice proclaiming the good news of Jesus wherever we go. And we have these tensions. That's what those arrows are on the screen that you see there. We have these tensions. We have the changes in our society, in our context, and we have our foundations. And they, they are both pulling in either direction. And in the middle, we have these ways in which we want to serve and minister together. The reality is, and the implications of this are, that we will be and we are in a time of change. We may be changing the way the programs look and sound. We may be changing some of our structures. Maybe even some of our staffing will change over the next little while. And this has certainly all been compounded and complicated by our reality of the pandemic restrictions in which we have been living in the last little while. This morning, I want to focus for a brief moment of time on the second of these three areas of change and emphasis for us as a congregation, the area of connection and belonging. Connection and belonging. 
There's a verse that I love from the Apostle Paul as he's writing to the church in Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Hear these words from Paul as he's writing to the fellowship of believers there. He says, So deeply do we care for you. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves. Because you have become very dear to us. It's an expression of the deep connection that Paul has with the church and that he wants us as a church to have with one another and with those who would be a part of this fellowship. In order to live out the calling that we have as Fort Gary, we need to find new ways, refreshed ways to connect and to belong to one another and to the mission that we share together. Just yesterday afternoon, Kathy and I were at a memorial service. Well, it wasn't really a service, a memorial gathering uh, for a cousin of mine who passed away suddenly just a few weeks ago. They had a very small funeral uh, right after his passing. And then we gathered together as extended families and friends to mourn his loss, to grieve together, to remember together. And there was no program as such. There was no, like, it wasn't a church service kind of thing. They had already done that with the funeral that we all watched online rather than being there in person. But essentially what happened in our gathering yesterday was that people came forward and said, this is what I remember. This was a moment in our life together where he impacted my life, where we were bonded, where we lived together and experienced things together. We shared with each other the connection that we had that made this relationship meaningful. And as those stories of connection were shared, those of us who were connected in one way, like he's my cousin, you know, extended family, got to hear about how he related to his coworkers and friendship circles, to his own brothers and sisters. And I got to appreciate in new ways who my cousin was, what he meant to others. But it was meaningful because there was connection. As a people of God called out to serve the kingdom of God together, the meaning and the purpose is tied up in our connections with one another. Our expressions of genuine community. As a faith family here at Fort Gary, we want to be that genuine community that embraces and cares for people. That reaches across the divides and the barriers in our society, even more today in this time of pandemic, to provide a place for people to connect, to experience faith, to receive and to share love for one another, to be built up and encouraged in their daily walks. This community bridges all ages, all ethnicities, all backgrounds, all brokenness, coming together to grow together, to mature in our understanding of Christ together, and to belong to one another and to belong to Christ together. Robert Banks has written a book that I studied when I was in seminary about Paul's idea of community. Paul is that apostle who's, who wrote a good portion of the New Testament in which he is writing to the churches that he has established. And he is talking about what it means to live out this faith together. And in 
that book, he highlights what he thinks the community of faith is about. He says, first of all, that the community of believers is a heavenly reality, not only a, a, an earthly gathering of people. It is a heavenly, heavenly reality in that we are bonded together by the Holy Spirit that is within us. And that we are bound together for the purposes of Christ in the person of Christ. Two of the main images that Paul uses in the scriptures are the image of family connections. Where he, in a way that had not been done in their society, starts calling the people around him sister and brother. In a way that signifies meaningful Connection, tangible ties and bonds of love. He also uses the metaphor of the body, the body of Christ, in Christ, unified in the purposes of Christ through the power of the Spirit. There are three ways that I see this kind of body life, community being lived out among us as we serve one another. One is through intentional care. Another is through embracing our differences. And the third is through having honest conversations with one another. In Romans 15 verse 7, Paul writes to the church in Rome and he reminds them that the connection that they have with one another is found in Christ. And that who Christ has accepted and welcomed, we too must embrace and welcome into our own hearts and lives. To be a community that lives with intentional caring with one another means that we must live in an openness in our lives. We choose to be open with our lives and to hold what we are and who we are with an open hand where we make time for one another. We make space in our busy way too busy schedules for one another. We live in a life marked by hospitality and lavish generosity for others. That's not only gifts of material things, but lavish generosity of caring, of time, of connection, of serving in love with one another, an investment in the brother's and sisters of our community. The second way that we want to connect and belong to one another in this vision for our church is by embracing the differences among us. You already know, you are very aware that there are huge differences and diversity among us in this congregation. There are those of you who are going to vote one way in the election that's coming up, and there are those of you who are say, I could never vote for that person. I'm going to vote for this person. And we have those political views that are different. We also have theological differences and diversity. And certainly, we, this morning we had Eugene and Antoinette here who come from a very different place in the world but are now part of this community here. And we are united in these differences. To be a community that embraces those differences, we must be a people of humility. That's one of the hardest things for us, is to set aside our sense of, I know what's best, I know what's right, I know the way things ought to be, and to set that aside for a moment in humility so that we can hear one another so that we can see one another past the masks that cover our faces and see into one another's hearts. It requires us to have a curiosity about different ways of seeing and experiencing the world, understanding that there are those for whom life in this same community looks and sounds and feels very different and often in ways that are marginalizing and painful. We need to be ready to hear and to see that. It will require patience 
and grace. The kind of patience and grace that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit bringing its fruit out in our lives. So that we may have unity in our differences as we serve together one Lord, one purpose, which is the kingdom of God and the glory of God in his kingdom. This leads us to honest conversations. It's one of the things that has become most difficult in our society lately, is to speak openly and honestly for various reasons. One is that polarization that I talked about, where there seems to be so little middle ground. But added on top of that is the fear that has come along with that polarization that if I say something, how will you react? Who will be, jump on my back and say, you're wrong, you don't belong here, you don't have the right to say those things? to shut the door. In order for us to have honest conversations about theology, about what it means to be the people of God, about what it means to be fully human with the Holy Spirit guiding us, we need to be vulnerable, willing to let down our defenses, to let others see into our hearts, our souls, what it is that is important to us, what it is that we value, and to move past the fear that puts up walls and barriers to that kind of communication. It means that in our honest conversations, we must speak carefully, with integrity, as it says in the scriptures, to answer gently to one another, not to hit people over the head with scriptures as a weapon, but rather allow the truth of Scripture to open us up to one another and to deepening our fellowship with one another. And it also requires us to be open. There's a reason I'm pausing. It requires us to be open to change. Change can be difficult. Change often brings discomfort, and sometimes change even brings pain into our life. And so, what do we do? We avoid change as much as possible. We try to keep things the same way, so we're comfortable. We know what's expected. We know how things are. Honest conversations mean nothing if we are not willing to actually hear what is being spoken and consider that maybe we need to change. As we go into this new season, coming up in just a few weeks as we head back into our ministry life, my hope is that we can carry this vision of connection and belonging, fellowship in the body of faith together with one another. As you walk into this week and into this season, I want you to take this verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And let it sink into your heart, into your mind. And let it become how you walk with one another. So deeply do I care for you. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel, not only the gospel of God, but also our very selves because you are very dear to us. May we walk together in this kind of unity, this kind of fellowship as the family of God here at Fort Gary. Would you bow in prayer with me at this time? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness and new life that we have found in him that unites us peoples of all backgrounds, people of all kinds of different situations. As you have said in your scriptures, there is no longer these barriers between us, no longer slave and free, male and female, as it says in scripture, no longer right and left, no longer 
from this place or that place, but we are one people united by your spirit. May we be committed to openness and vulnerability, humility, as we walk with one another, caring for one another, embracing the differences among us through the power of your spirit and speaking words of truth with gentleness and with ears that are ready to listen. May we do this all to the glory of of Jesus in this place and the joy of sharing your light with our community. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's respond in song together. Amen. Yes, let's respond and let's stand as we do so. Speak your truth, Lord, your truth I seek. I'll trust your words, not what I see. Grant me your blessing, your grace this day. And not my will, but yours I pray. May thy will be done as it is in heaven. May thy kingdom. Yet where you lead, I'll carry on. I know you're able to rescue me, but even if you don't, I still believe. May that will be done, as it is in heaven, may that kingdom come. Lord, as you give and as you take away. from here, I want to leave you with these words uh, from Romans 15, 5 to 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.